All right, guys, welcome back. In the last audio, we talked about the digestible metabolic foods. Hopefully that stirred the pot for some of you, but also brought a lot of clarity. At the end, we talked about the problem. The problem of fear. You know, the problem of conditioning. And these are the things that we talk about with our clients on a day-to-day basis, you know. I think we're we're really afraid. Uh, I, well, going back to the foods that we talked about, you know, a lot of these foods are foods that you're being told to stay away from. And right. again, we, we, we touched on why that might be true. And our goal, the goal in most diets that we see in treating the system is to avoid the problem and hope that it goes away. And we know that mm-hmm. that's really not true. The difference here is we're going in and we're actually working with the system to create more communication clear communication because we have to understand when our blood sugar is out of whack or our metabolism is in a deficit, there is not a a clear communication going on in the system. But we also understand that there's a ton of fear around these foods. I mean, the biggest thing we probably hear from people is you're telling me to do Mm -hmm. exactly what everyone's telling me not to do or what every blog is telling me what not to do, what every YouTube is telling me what not to do. Well, first of all, when we think about it, most people are cutting out these foods because they're trying to treat sy- symptoms. You know, they're, they're thinking about it from a candida perspective or you're conditioned to believe that carbs cause weight gain. Or you feel like just crap when you eat them. And that's, again, just giving you more information as far as where you may be on that metabolic spectrum. So it's not that you can't eat carbohydrates, that you can't break them down, that you're intolerant to them. It's more about what's happening in the system that's creating that inability to do so. And our goal is, again, to work to restore that function versus continue to put a Band-Aid over it. Right. And if you think about it, you don't want to live in a, you don't want to be involved in a fear-based model, live in, live in fear of food. You know, we're trying to bring back that. The basics. The basics. I mean, if you think about what like your great grandparents did, right? Going I mean, back to the basics of food frequency, food balance, eating right. whole food. I mean, what's more fun than eating food and eating food that makes you feel well and be healthy so you don't have to do tons of labs and tons of supplements. So really... Kind of what differentiates us. Well, I think, yeah, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, is what we talked about in that first, I think it was our actually our welcome audio when we said um, our goal or fundamental objective is to optimize cellular energy production. And that's the ticket. That's what really sets us aside from what everyone else is teaching from a nutritional standpoint. And that really should be. The objective of any nutrition program is to optimize cellular energy production because, again, it is at the root of every single one of our systems. I mean, it, it's who we are. It's how we're brought into this life. It's And if you think about it, what we're really trying to do is heal you from the inside out to cell level up. Most philosophies are trying to treat you the other way, and that's why you might get some result, but then... The issues come back. We're really trying to hard change the hardwiring the system or what you've kind of compensated into so you never have to deal with your issues again. So we kind of want to talk a little bit about what cellular energy is. And I think in doing that, what we want to do is attach metabolism to it. Because I think at the root of metabolism, that's really what's happening. It's all those different things that are happening at the cellular level. Well, let's just define metabolism. Because everyone's using that word right now, and it's kind of a big buzzword. And really, to simplify it, metabolism is... We'll use a couple explanations, and they're really simple. It's all the biochemistry that's happening within your body. All the physiology that's going on. Or it's that furnace. You know, that furnace is allowing you to produce energy and stay healthy or like we talked about I think in the second audio to stay in that homeostatic state or bounce out of it and be able to come back right so it's essentially it's it's who you are as a person mm-hmm. and so you know just to kind of simply to put a little kind of a, a visual on it I guess you can say or an analogy is that your your metabolism is made up of millions of little engines let me and those little engines we can call your cells And the better these little engines make energy, or the more efficient they are at making energy, the stronger your metabolism will be. So again, going back to our most 
fundamental right. objective is to strengthen this piece of who you are because again when we look at what cellular energy affects it affects every single system in the body so for example it's going to affect your digestive system. It's going to affect your respiratory system. It's at the root of your circulatory system, your muscle system, your nervous system, your excretory system, your reproductive, every single system in your body. So when we think about digestion, we think about gas, constipation, diarrhea, those types of symptoms. When we think about respiratory, when we think about coughing, wheezing, asthma, sinus infection, circulatory, I mean, it goes on and on and on. These are all heavily connected. So if we can get out of our own way and begin to start focusing in on how to optimize this for ourselves using our food, then don't you think we can begin to allow the body to do what it already knows how to do? Because essentially it's seeking out health every single moment. It just doesn't have the proper resources on board to be able to express health in the way that you might be looking for. Right. So just to give you kind of an example, because a lot of that is probably hard to sink in, you know, um, what most people are doing is <clears throat> they're looking at the systems, like you need to digest it, respiratory, et cetera. Here's your diet. Here's your supplement. Let's fix it. Let's try to eliminate the symptoms, right? Those are the kind of wants. I want to eliminate my symptoms. But we're looking at the need, the need of cellular respiration. So let's just give a quick example with, you know, kind of stress in the gut. And how cellular respiration can actually, uh, kind of quote unquote, fix that versus just treating it with a supplement. So when we're our body's in a stress state, right? Whether it's a, a you know physiologic reaction or we're in survival mode, we're running from a lion. And that's the example textbooks use, right? So if you're running from a lion, you're not thinking about digesting food. You're not thinking about procreating, so your hormonal system's affected. You're not thinking about going to the bathroom because you're running from a lion. So what happens? A lot of times you get constipated, you have hormonal issues, you have digestive problems, right? Because you're in a stress state. The body, it's, it's survival. You're in survival mode. That is more important, running, blood going to the extremities, than digesting food. But if we bring the body out of that survival mode, if we give the body food to regulate the blood sugar, right, we talked about that, in order to reduce the stress response, what do we do? We upregulate how the GI system is working. Because energy actually regulates our energy production and thyroid hormone production regulate peristalsis in the GI system as well as the production of digestive enzymes, etc. So it's been shown through a lot of research and through the work of Hans Celier and Dr. Timmons and all these people that when you're stressed, your digestive juices decrease by over 50%. So if we can bring the body closer to homeostasis with food and regulate our blood sugar and pull our body out of the survival mode, what do we do? We upregulate how the GI system works versus just try to treat the GI system, right? So we're indirectly treating it through cellular respiration. What is cellular respiration? Well, efficient cellular respiration is, is well, I think it's pretty simple. Of course, this might be the complex part of what we're talking about kind of more the science behind it in, in right. a very simplified sense. So it, you've heard, you might have heard it's called many different things. Cellular respiration, oxidative metabolism, mitochondrial respiration, because that's where energy is produced. It's called oxidative metabolism because it requires glucose from carbohydrates, oxygen from the air we breathe, as well as from energy production, because we produce oxygen, and that's how we it's actually, cycle. it's a cycle, it's a feedback mechanism, so we need optimal re you know, respiration at the cell level to keep that process going, and optimal thyroid hormone production. So, when we eat the right foods, right, we're going back to the foods we're eating, and we eat them in the right frequency to regulate our blood sugar, which we talked about, what happens? We actually begin to store energy, well, we teach the body to store energy or glucose in the liver. Why is that important? Because that's where 95%, or some say it's 80 to 95%, depends on who you read, of thyroid hormone production is actually converted. It's converted in the periphery. So it's interesting. We store sugar or glucose in the liver, and that's where thyroid hormone production is actually um the conversion is actually happening, and you and it's it, you literally one hundred percent need glucose to convert thyroid hormone. 
But if we're not eating it, we're not storing it. And if we're under severe stress, the chances of whether, even if we are eating it, we're not storing it because of, again, the effects of inflammation and the production of lactic acid. So there's a lot of different things happening here. And that's what we have to keep in mind is we're simplifying it here. But I think what Josh says is the most important thing. If we don't have the resource on board to make the conversion, it automatically is going to affect our ability right. And this is why the carbs are so important. Yes. The, the carbs are important so we can get the glucose. The frequency is important so we can regulate our blood sugar so we can teach the liver, reteach the liver to store the energy so we can use it to convert a thyroid hormone. So now we have glucose and thyroid hormone to use at the cell level, right? There's other things like minerals, but those are the two most important things we need to produce ATP, CO2, and wa- water, which is energy. And we need those things to produce energy. Now, if we're not using those things or storing those things, we're not producing energy. We're not going back to homeostasis, right? We're trying to make all these correlations. We're actually in a state of inflammation. And what that means is we're producing lactic acid. We're not storing glycogen. We're not converting thyroid hormone. And things are working backwards in the cell. I don't want well, to go into it. the body's in a state of compensation. Yeah. It's, in a, it's in a full state of compensation. So it's stealing from Peter to pay Paul. And the reason this is becoming so important and what we're teaching and how we present it and how it's applied is that, again, we are seeing a, a huge trend in our own practice that it's, it's becoming, it, there's a need for specificity. We have to get specific about what we're doing in order to pull the body out of it. And as we continue to do that, it builds resiliency over time. Right. There's so many stages of healing. I'm sorry. That's okay. So think about it. If you don't take in fuel, the adrenals regulate the availability of fuel. So if you don't take in fuel, what happens? The adrenals go in overdrive. Right? Adrenal stress, adrenal fatigue, all the terms people use. So they're making up for everything you're not doing. Right. If you don't take in fuel, the adrenals work overtime. This is inefficient. And now they'll release hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, which are destructive for tissue. They break down your tissue to get the proteins and fats, which is called gluconeogenesis, to produce energy at the cell level. But this is very inefficient. It's catabolic. And we produce lactic acid. Right? Because we're releasing fats that we really can't use to produce energy. And it's, as I said, it's very inefficient. But we also want to say that we, it's, an un, it, we, it's understood it's a survival right. necessity for the human body to be able to have that adaptive energy mechanism. It's just not designed to be our primary and long-term energy mechanism. So we're talking about two very different things. Yes, it's necessary, but at the same time, when we're under inflammation and it's accumulative, we have to take action to pull the body back out of that state to create normalcy. Like I said, I think it was maybe in the first or second audio, sometimes things are happening and they seem like a symptom, but it's actually your body's way of maintaining homeostasis in the face of a threat. But that doesn't mean it's actually good for you to be in that state all the time. So let me kind of reiterate this. You need fuel to burn fuel. Uh, you need fuel if you don't take it in. There's a stress in the adrenals. But if you're not, if there's no fuel, the thyroid has to work overtime because the thyroid regulates the burning of fuel. So if you don't have fuel, you can't burn fuel, you don't produce energy, right? And you're producing lactic acid. You're, in an en- you're basically in an energy deficit. And these are the people that feel tired. They maybe have hormone problems, gut problems, thyroid problems, etc. So how do you know whether or not you're producing efficient energy or inefficient energy? Well, that's what we will be covering in the next audio. We're going to be talking to you about exactly how to do that. Sounds complicated, but it's pretty easy. Stay tuned.